Emily Stans on Modern Magic Mondays here. And half of our players have either gained three, <laughs> gone to six, or gone to three, or mm. stayed at three, or <laughs> stayed at zero. Right, we just think. Uh, Remember, we're before there were seasons. Good times. Apparently, we've really grown up yeah. here at Modern Magic Monday. Back, back in the day, for the archives, for all the people like, but it's it's also like old school magic coverage for like GPs and Pro Tours, <laughs> where you're like. What is actually happening on camera right now? <laughs> um, so, Tim, Jeremy, TJ, Lucas, Keenan, got another win. All right. John, all sitting at six points. So, let's talk our top eight players, our players that we need to keep an eye on. Right. Tim. Tim. TJ. TJ. Keenan. Keenan. Lyle. Lyle. Derek. Derek. Eric. Eric. Ben. Ben. Um. I feel like that was that seven. Yeah. Those are our seven that are officially like in the top eight essentially at this point. Jeremy was also. Jeremy's eighth place. Oh, okay, Jeremy's the last yeah. eighth place person, six points. So we also have. Chris DeRosa and is Mox playing tonight? Yeah. John Mathias as the two wild cards in there with Jeremy, essentially. And yeah, Mox has to go 5-0 and o to make top 8. Um, and Patrick Perry. That was the yep. other one. I was like, I know there was somebody else in the list. Yep. Um... So it's 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 really close, guys. Like, you know, we we pretty much said I think we're five now. Five are locked. Yes. Keenan winning the bye, locking uh, himself in. Patrick saying he went O two drop. He was so pissed. Oh, that's tough. So with Mox, Mox had to have a five O, and everybody else had to go O five. So he is no longer eligible. Um. It's now between Jeremy and Chris for who makes it into eighth place. Okay. All right. So it's... We got a race. We have a race. And we will actually be seeing Chris on camera next. No. Fourth round? That's fourth round. Never mind. Not third round. Fourth round. Who do we have next round? Let's find out. Oh, good idea. Because I can't remember. You killed me. I'm trying. You're killing me. I'm trying to keep you on your toes. Oh, yeah, that's who we have on camera. So, Jeremy Miller doing uh, I knew that all along. such a great job. Just, decides, you know what, I want to come back and get on camera. But he now he's going to be facing down the current number seven place player. Yes. Tim Reidenberg, who's been pi our, our resident Murpo player. Yeah. Such a cheater, unfair deck. Well, so... He introduced Simic Fish to us. What's that? End of season one? I think so. Um, and since then, Jeremy made Simic Fish, I made Simic Fish. Um, Heart pick, muscles. Head pick, infected. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we, of course... Dwayne's got the mono blue version of Merfolk. So we've got some Merfolk players running around. But straw poll is up, guys. Get the votes in. Because we love, again, this is a great way for you guys to interact in chat. Let us know who you're thinking. Is it going to be, in fact, is it going to be Simic Merfolk? So what is the difference between Simic Merfolk compared to the mono blue list that's running around? So the biggest reason, right, that you're going to run green forests in your merfolk deck as for a little card I don't know how popular it actually is but collected company you know mm -hmm. four mana two green two colorless or is it one green no it's two green two colorless right or is it one green three one green and three. Oh, it's, so even, it's, better. it's yeah. even better easy, easy to splash yep um, look at the top six cards put two Creatures of converted mana costs three or, less three or less onto the battlefield. Which, by the way, if you guys were curious, um, I'm 
fairly certain besides Master of Waves. And you strip out Master of Waves now because you're running the Cocos. Oh, okay. So so you the, everything every creature everything is live is able to be put on the bed. Even things like Kira the Great Glass Spinner. There you go. You can bring that it's out. It's a pretty great card. Yeah. So, and then you just run other cards, like Simic Charm, you know, just for, for funsies. But we'll find out. We'll see how it goes. We've kind of seen an all-in strategy from Jeremy tonight. But that was ad nauseum. All right, so we give a rundown of what the Coco added into it, but just another for newer players out there. What Merp? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! We know he's running. Could be playing in green. green. <laughs> That's true. We could. Um, no. So the other thing is, it's a tribal deck mm -hmm. for all you tribal fans out there. Second best. I don't know. Maybe not second best anymore. Third best tribal deck in modern currently. Band Eldrazi or the Eldrazi list probably being the best one. Maybe elves and merfolk are rotating between the second and third place spot for for tribal decks. Um, so also Tim is locked in here. Yes, um, he should be locked in here with six points. Mm, let's watch. Yeah, um, Simic Charm <laughs> is surprisingly a good card. The blue and a green could be able to give your permanent hexproof, can bounce uh, a permanent, and, or can bounce a creature, I think it is, and you have Giant Crow, so it's like pretty, pretty nice. Tim fetches, gets an island, starts with the Curse Catcher. Here is Averting Catacombs for Jeremy. Passes back. Combat, swing it for one. Silver Gill off the Mute Vault. Troll. Ink Moth Nexus. Here is a Blighted Agent. And pass back. Alright, so... Infect does have a harder time against creature decks like Murpho and, and, and things like that that can gum up the board and that deal a lot of burst damage like this. Where it can just be like, all right, here's a turn where I'm going to swing in, you know, let's see, uh, five damage that turn. And once he starts getting some of the lords out, it gets really crazy. Um, Curse Catcher, having the ability to sack and counter an uh, instant or sorcery, unless it's controller phase one, really messes up Jeremy's math. But the fact that he does have the Blighted Agent m makes things really valuable here. So pain to life, Gitaxian Probe's gonna reveal Cavern of Souls, Flooded Strand, Harbinger of the Tides, and a Collected Company.
Dragul in chat saying second curse catcher could versus infects. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, Harbinger of the Tides is a newer addition uh, that really does mess things up for infect. Might have all cross uh, sure. Hmm. So let's the first one go, knowing that he can start countering the next one. There's nothing that Jeremy can do about it. Pays for mutagenic growth, protecting his life total. Tim says, wait a second. Combat seven, six, no, seven. It's going to take seven. Tim doing the math. Here's a cavern of souls. Names. Dinosaur. Of course. And combat. So just five again. Oh, six. No. So. Tim sitting four, here two. with this lovely four mana open. So when Jeremy chooses to swing in, he can say collective company, or he can say, here's my four mana, and I'm gonna flash in Harbinger. I think he opted for the four mana, let's flash in Harbinger plan. Mm -hmm. So like, all of this is, is difficult. And when you're in Jeremy's position. Alright, so plays a Glister Elf. Basically saying this now can add us some blockers here. Um, he has to be careful though. Because with the Mutavolt and the extra damage here, because Harbinger's going to come in. Looks like Collective Company. He gets a third Curse Catcher <laughs> and a Master of the Curl Trident. And says you may resume with your attack. Cannot block it, so I'll just take one more. go to game two. That's another master. So here's all this island walking. Everything gets plus two, plus two. So three, six, nine, 13 damage coming across. And so this is where things get difficult for, I mean, I mean that, that was really just a good showcasing of why that matchup is difficult for Infect. And I would say it's probably 60-40 in favor of Merfolk, depending on what version you're running, whether it's the Simic Fish version, whether it's the Mono Blue version, whether it's the Blue White. 
it's nine times out of ten a 60-40 matchup for you. Um, and you have an uphill battle to try to get through. Um, now, some might argue magic is not all just math and numbers. But whatever. Let's talk sideboards. Who do you want to, who do you want to go for? Well, actually, I read Jeremy's last time. Do you want to read him this time? Sure. Or would you rather read it? Tim. I'll take Jeremy. Okay. Uh, he's got one Graph Digger's Cage, three Nature's Claim, one Dryad Arbor, one Twisted Image, one Dispel, one Spell Skype, one Unravel the Aether, one Spell Pierce, two Dismember, and three Kitchen Finks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Graph Digger's Cage is a very good card here. Uh, I also like the Kitchen Finks. Yeah. Um, Kitchen Finks is going to not only provide you a stable blocker against the creatures as long as you don't have a burning blow. Um, <laughs> Or he doesn't spreading seas on your lands. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it also provides you with two life as it enters the battlefield, as well as two after it blocks. Yes. So it's a, it's a way to kind of gain that life back and sort of stabilize against a merfolk to try and prepare for one good attack mm-hmm. to finish it out. Um, noble mentions. I'm going to assume that with the entrance of green into the merfolk deck... Um, the number of Aether Vials gets cut down? Mm, no. Okay, so you, it still you, runs you a still full run play, a set? play set? of all four of them. Okay. Because really the... the You're going to look at the top six, and the objective of, of the deck is to cheat out Merfolks as quickly as possible. So Vials will work, and Collected Companies will work. You're running four collected, uh, or I think maybe it's three, three collected, maybe, maybe four. I don't know. I think that's the variation of it. But you you have a place set of vials still, and then two, um, simic charms, and a variation on the number of spreading seas you have. But the rest is all creatures. Um, the vials just too important because you can't activate your collected company until turn four. Um, so while they're doing that stuff real quick, let me go over Tim's sideboard. Um, one Pith and Needle, two Natural State, three Spell Sky, two Tidebinder Mages, two Relic of Progenitus, two Hercules Recall, one Kira Great Glass Spinner, and two Unified Will. So I really like um, the two Unified Wills here because Counter Target Spell, unless you're... A, uh, uh, counter Target Spell, if you control more... Uh, creatures than your opponent um so i really like that in this sort of matchup because most of the time you will have more creatures um spell sky's another option to be bringing in i like at least a one of uh for that and then i actually like natural state here over pithing needle in this matchup um to be able to destroy um ink moth nexus to be able to destroy um Things like that. Some people like the Tidebinder Mages because you can tap down Glistener Elf, you can tap down Noble Hierarchs, but those are again the, the potential options. But for sure, Unified Bull and Spell Skites um, are, are the big glaring ones. I need to bring those in. So we've had some matches, uh, some stuff happening. Um, Breeding Pool uh, was able to come down. Then we got to see, of course, the Glistener Elf. We did get to see three damage. Right, did he do the Pendlehaven, Distortion, and the Elf? Or did that I looks like out? three up there. Okay, so I'm going that's to what assume I so. Just wanted to double check. Distortion Strike, great card. Give a creature uh, plus one, plus oh, unblockable, and then you rebound it. That is one of the variety cards, flex cards, that I, w- I guess, the few flex cards that in fact does run. Um, some people have chosen to get rid of it. Um, other people have opted for the slip through for the extra draw. It's really up to you. I like the extra damage personally. So, okay, this is Tim bringing in the Tidebinder Mage saying this guy is now tapped down. He does not untap. Uh, so sorry about it. I'm assuming he's at 19. Yes. Don't worry, that'll be a spot on our bingo board for players that forget to update their life total on the iPad. 
another character catcher is annoying, but we do see a blighted agent. So one of the ways that Jeremy has to protect himself against Tidebinders and, and Harbinger of the Tides and things like that are having Vines of Vastwood and Apostle Blessing, things like that. Okay, did go to 17. Cool. Just slacking. <laughs> Going to combat for three. That vial should be at two now. Um, so that's something that if Jeremy tried to like block and do things like that, he could vial in a lord or something to start pumping his guys for more damage. Or even just, you know, before damage. No blocks. Okay, cool. Activate. His life won't matter. His life could matter. You could kill him with a noble. Alright, so it does reveal that there is a harbinger here. Um, so he's got to be able to use a vines or an apostle's blessing if he wants to use a blighted agent to kill him here. He'll have access to three green and a blue. So the blue could be used for the Apostle's Blessing and the rest could be used for pumps. Um, Tim's already taken three poison. But let's see what he's got. Essentially trying to kill Tim. Uh, he knows a lot about his hand. Mutagenic growth. Trigger. Ooh. So he should then have Apostle's Blessing. Yo, Jurassic Sky with the follow. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Glad you're liking the stream. And Apostle's Blessing. Yeah. Trigger. And we'll go to game three. Perfect. That was the only way that he was going to uh, get through that Harbinger. And you can see with the way he set things up here. All right, doing these pumps, leaving the blue mana up and not using the blue mana for to cast Vines. Or, I mean, sorry, to cast uh, Wild Defiance to indicate, oh, it could be Vines with my one green left is saying, okay, then I have to have Apostle's Blessing here to kill you. And with him attacking like that, knowing flat out what is on the board, it's like, alright, I see what you're doing, but I have to go through the motions just in case you're just trying to sneak one over. So as they're shuffling up, we'll just go ahead and give you guys exactly what they brought in. Ooh, I'm excited. So Jeremy brings in just one Unravel the Aether. Interesting. Whereas he takes out one Twisted Image and one Viridian Corruptor. And on Tim's side, he brings in... Well, it looks like he told us he only, he only brought in one Spell Skype that night. But it, I have three spell skite here as well as two tide binder mage. And he takes out two simic charm, one spreading seas, one collective company, and one phantasmal image. Okay. So Unravel the Aether was the only thing Jeremy brought in. <gasps> Drewski oh, Brew! Drewski Brew! Thank you so much, dude, for the bro nation. Ten dollars. Yay, out of work early. Thanks for the stream. Glad you're able to tune in. 
I know our stream time makes it a little bit difficult for the West Coast viewers out there. I only have one Spellskite in my sideboard. Interesting. Have some... So, Unified Will... Well, no, we got to see Tidebinders come in. So what's the other stuff? Unified Will... <laughs> spell Pierce that I brought in. Does he have a Spell Pierce on his list? Okay. Not from what I have. Um, Jeremy. There could be just some discrepancy. Knowing that you only brought in the Unravel the Aether, why not bring in, like, the Dismembers, Kitchen Finks's, um, Things like that in this sort of matchup. Are you still just like no holds barred and going going ham? Scry one. Mute a vault into an aether vial. Pass the turn. Cataxian Pro going to eighteen for Jeremy. Two lords and a silver gill adept, as well as a cavern of souls in an island. Silvergill comes down off the Cavern of Souls. Passes back. Noble, pass. Okay. Flooded Strand. Play a Lord. Jeremy saying, whoa, wait a second. Hold on. It's too blue. You cannot use that mutable. I think this sideboard was incorrectly written. <laughs> I brought in this member. Okay. All right, so it's possible that this time around things were just written wrong, which happens from time to time. Thinks isn't bad. I'm just still on the hyper aggressive plan. All right, and and we saw that it worked out pretty well. But oh my gosh, two vials, two lords already set things up now, and Jeremy is stumbling to kind of catch up at this point to what Tim has on board. But the one benefit is we don't have Island Walk yet. Listener Elf. Plays island. So, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage. So, lethal on board, because both the lords are threes, and both of the, the Mutavolt uh, and the Silver Gill... Uh, yes. We uh, are. Four fours. And those vials there are able to come up. And it looks like that dismember that he brought in is going to come down. Vial in a spell skite. Redirect it. To protect his Lord of Atlantis. And Jeremy says, Do I have an out? Nope. Nope. You got it.
I mean, game one and game three were kind of textbook what you want to see happen from the merfolk side of things if you're playing against in fact like the things that need to happen happened like you have your lords to just start pumping your guys you're swinging in for four to five damage a turn and most of the time the infect, infect players have to pay life for the cataxian probes they have to fetch they have to shock so it's very easy to just start slowly draining yourself down and only two, three turns in the um, Murpho player kills you. And that was a great way to showcase it too. Of, of It's difficult when you have to rely purely on one guy for this whole pure style and they're going so wide that you can't even keep up with it. Um, but a really good showcasing from both the players ended up going 2-1 in Tim's favor, officially locking him in for top eight. Now... It's up in the air, even more so. Definitely. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens with our points, but before we get to that, thank you. You, watching at home, we appreciate it. Whether you're watching us live, which we have a decent number of viewers out there, we have some great interaction in the chat, and my phone's talking to me, stop talking to me phone. Um, Great viewers interacting in chat, giving some great discussion, some good insight and input about um, these different decks. We've got, of course, our straw polls, all that kind of good stuff going in chat. But we also have the VODs that get posted up every week. So if you're watching from the VODs, thank you as well. We appreciate that. A um, couple of stuff for, for just the maintenance stuff, if you will. YouTube, we've got one set up for Modern Magic Mondays. All the VODs are up there. If you click on that banner modern magic mondays hashtag mmm there that'll bring you directly to the youtube channel once we get 100 subscribers we can officially lock in youtube.com slash modern magic mondays but we don't have that yet i think we're like 25 or so subscribers nice so thank you guys for uh, your continued support with that um twitch.tv slash modern magic mondays will be the official channel come season three so we do love all the support you guys have been given over here at twitch.tv slash the real man um but make sure you guys head over there and hit the subscribe button there by following us here you of course are eligible for our giveaways of stickers uh that we've got at the end of the night when we discuss the official top eight mm -hmm. we'll have a giveaway uh, you, do, you have to be present to at least enter into the raffle uh for that but you do not have to live local to get a sticker because we will mail them to you um so that's at least and that's all we thing. use your address for yeah that's it so if you do not feel comfortable sending us your address, then maybe if we end up meeting at an event or something like that, we can uh, give you guys that stuff because we do travel up and down the East Coast from time to time. Um, of course, yeah, some more than others. This year, I wish I could go to more events. I missed out on all the big modern GPs. <laughs> to trip a comic kung fu, I'm not playing a tiny violin for you, dude. <laughs> to Dionysus Bacchus. Yeah, that's all we yeah, need. No, that's that's it. no big deal, guys. Just to, And to Matthew Manson, our patron subscribers, thank you guys so much. Uh, Trip and Dionysus Bacchus, Christopher Bennett, hitting that $30 level, earning themselves a spot here right on the channel, kind of the personal patrons for Modern Magic Mondays. Uh, Matt Manson throwing us a couple bucks, not able to come out, but really enjoying all of the content and us kind of supporting modern in our local metagame so thank you guys so much um to our top stream donors drewski brew coming in today live which is pretty pretty awesome thank you so much dude atticus our mystery donor tatra damas lila goif nate hop 34 burgleton storm dust 07 badger 934 strong smash these are all individuals that have thrown a couple bucks our way to keep the stream alive keep the modern magic metagame going here in Winchester, Virginia. So thank you guys so much. Drewski Brew, dude. Jeez. But yeah, that's uh, that's our halfway point. I know what you guys are looking for. You're looking for round four. You are. But let's, before we get to that, we have points to show you. Yeah, let's because get it. Because then we got...